Hello, I'm Sarah Poole, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. Recently, hundreds of people have been traveling to the South Puget Sound daily to try and get even a glimpse of Orca Wells. This pot of wells, which is transient, has been staying in Hood Canal, apparently because of good source of food. And while agency scientists are gathering information on these spectacular animals, we do ask you to obey federal and state laws which are in place to protect them. So killer whales are a priority species for state fish and wildlife with uh, relatively small numbers that occur in Washington waters and the, the southern residents have been uh, proposed as listing because their numbers are have declined and they're in trouble. The whales that are here today that we're looking at are actually transients that come into Puget Sound and, and inland waters periodically to uh, feed on seals and sea lions so the, we're looking at some mammal eating killer whales versus salmon eating killer whales which are what the resident whales in Washington normally are. For uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife killer whales are a priority species because they're um, they're an indicator of the overall health of Puget Sound and, and a healthy killer whale population would indicate that the, the marine environment of Washington is is a healthy marine environment for other uh, animals that live in the water, fish and seals and sea lions, as well as, as for people to use it. Well, what we've tried to convey to the public is that they should let the whale swim as freely as possible and not to, to interfere with them or interact with them in their boats in a, in a negative way. And this location where we are in Hood Canal is actually, it's, it's, it's maybe more ideal to watch killer whales from shore and get that opportunity to look at them from um, from land rather than being in a boat. But if you were in a boat, we'd want the boat to not alter the whale's behavior and try and uh, observe them from a, a distance that doesn't disturb them. You know, the, ba the basic whale watching guidelines from a boat would have you parallel the whale's path, don't get in, in front of them so your boat is obstructing the, their, their ability to, to swim in a, in a straight line and don't operate your boat in a way that alters their behavior. The killer whales that are in Puget Sound, we know that they carry a fairly high contaminant burden, so we know that, that uh, the human population has been polluting the marine environment and, and through food chain interactions that, the, that those contaminants are magnified and passed up through killer whales. And we just need to work harder to make sure that we've got a clean marine environment for whales and seals and fish and, and people that use Puget Sound and Washington waters. Washington's game animals are a public resource. They may be hunted, but you must first obtain the necessary license and tags, and then follow the rules. There are people who don't want to go along with this simple plan. To put a stop to their poaching activities, the Department of Fish and Wildlife often sets out a decoy deer, stands back, and just watches what happens. One recent night near Spokane, a KHQ television camera with a night vision lens caught these scenes of someone who didn't want to follow the same rules as everybody else. You have the weapons every time you contact somebody. Most of the time, you're contacting someone that has had some type of alcohol. Sometimes they're so drunk they don't even know that we are who we are.
I wrote him a $1,250 citation. Probably the greatest deterrence for this gentleman is the embarrassment of, of getting caught doing what he did. Word will get out that we can work the area, that we have worked the area, and that uh, individuals will think twice, maybe, and give the animal a second chance. And that's all that these white-tailed deer need, and uh, they'll be off into the brush. This gentleman, uh, criminal citation for uh, hunting with the aid of an artificial light for $1,000, and and uh, he shot from inside the vehicle. So we also cited him for possessing a loaded weapon inside the motor vehicle. Now all fishing takes place in the summer. And you don't necessarily have to give up your nice weather to fish in winter or early spring. Tony Flores shows us just how good it can get in the San Juan Islands if it's salmon you want for a weekend dinner. March is a terrific time to be outdoors in Washington State. One of my favorite things to do during the month of March is fish for blackmouth in Puget Sound. Today we're up here in the beautiful San Juan Islands fishing for blackmouth. Of course, a blackmouth is an immature Chinook salmon. One of the ways that I like to fish for these blackmouth is with a downrigger and very light fishing tackle. We're using a plug cut bait with very light leaders, about 12 pound test, about 15 pound test mainline, and we're fishing these baits off of the downrigger ball, about 25 feet behind the downrigger ball. Let's put our bait in the water and take a look at the action of the bait and how your herring should, should attract salmon. So let's take a look at that. So as you can see, that bait is spinning very quickly. Look at the rotation of the tail. I like a very tight spinning bait, a plug cut herring, to attract these blackmouth. Now we're going to let out about 25 feet of line behind the downrigger ball and attach it. And we like to fish about 5 to 10 feet off the bottom. And this is a wonderful technique for fishing for blackmouth. What will happen is our rod tip will bounce a few times, we'll reel down, set the hook, and we'll be in business. So let's see how this technique works here in the islands. Now we're just waiting, waiting. And that's what fishing is all about, is waiting. I'm confident though, there's a lot of blackmouth around at this time of year in March, right here in the San Juan Islands. So let's see what happens. is my definition of having a great day during the month of March. We've had a fabulous time catching these hatchery Chinook here in the San Juan Islands 
with our good friend Larry Carpenter from Mount Vernon. If you can't get out fishing and having a great day like this in the San Juans, here's some other good places and ideas to fish in Washington State. March is a month that is very busy for the people who enjoy just watching our state's wildlife populations. Here are just a few opportunities in the weeks ahead. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can save Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. For more information about the agency's science publications, research projects, recreational opportunities, or the latest fishing and hunting news, please visit our website. Thank you for watching, and please join us again.